and it's it's remarkable. Whereas when you watch Super League, Anthony Gellin is literally the only player who plays the ball, who plays the ball. Yeah, in the whole competition. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> yeah, we, we we are shit at playing the ball. Yeah, I mean, we need, really if it's that well, easy. We could to solve, out, we could solve it in a round of fixtures. NRL solved it, so Super League just has to get on the blower to them. Say, send your bloke over. Mm. Tell them to have a word with all the lads. It shouldn't even be that complicated. It should just be someone sends yeah. an email around and goes, "All right, I just remember how you're actually supposed to play the game. Start fucking doing it." Yeah. Yeah. It should be dead I mean it'll be frustrating for fans for a while because our players in our competition are such fuckwits that they can't do anything but give penalties away it feels yeah. um, and then blame the ref for it because yeah. hey they're the easy target but actually after that stick happens for a period fans will appreciate that the rules are getting consistently applied there yeah. play the ball yeah cool okay. ball um, Alan Witt said not the most exciting of games and definitely not the witness we have been used to watching so far this season could this one be put down to both teams being tired both can play better but a good win for Saints yeah it did look it did feel a little bit like they were both neither of them were really if, firing at all if witness were tired it's because of the work done by the St. Helens forwards in this match yeah. when, when we talk about those running metres that they made they yeah. carried the load yeah that's what I would say I agree uh, Paul O'Brien said poor performance from witness today Lacked ideas in attack and lost possession too easily. Only starting to play with 10 minutes to go. Thought Silverwood had a poor game. Can't comment on the video ref decisions. A screen was obscured by the sun. Saints are still far from their best. Two defeats over the weekend, but still in the top four. Okay, Andy Barker got in touch yeah. and he said that there were two tired teams playing out a game uh, where not that much really happened. After two awful games prior to this, Saints forward stepped up uh, a bit and finished deserved winners. Brian Davies also said no Kevin Brown, no points for Widness. Hambry and Houston both had shockers and helped Widness revert to form. Um... Lots of stupid errors and penalties making it easier for the big boys to get the points. Paul Ludo Lewis, if anyone is looking for an argument to be to scrapping Easter Monday games, then show the RFL this match. Two sets of tired players with teams making fewer handling errors coming out on top. Won't slight witness though, as the boys have been immense this year so far. Still witness till I die. Aiden Stalker said, not the best game, but I'm of the opinion that Easter Monday games tend to lack quality due to the tiredness and injury factor. Another encouraging performance from Farge, but Luke Thompson stole the show. Savelio, Armour and Wormsley all fed off his energy. Badly needed result, but I'm not going to get carried away as I think we caught witness at the right time. Mm-hmm. And the final word on this one goes to Alex Leonard, who's not a name I'm totally familiar with, but thank you for getting in yeah, touch, Yeah, thanks mate. for getting on board, Alex. Uh, yeah, um, another one with a unisex name getting in touch with us. Who knows? Uh, with no Kevin Brown, witness lacked creativity and our kicking game suffered. The squad looked tired, simple mistakes cost us, and we were continuously and sometimes questionably penalised by Silverwood. The movement of the ball was slow and restricted. It will be a relief to have Brown back when he's fit. For a second there, I thought you meant Leonard was the ambiguous name. Was that what you're about? No, no, Alex. Uh, yeah, no, I'm on board now. Cool. Okay, so nothing to see here in terms of video refereeing decisions. Then it was Catalan Dragons 41, Castleford Tigers 22. There is only one thing to talk about, really, isn't there? And it's the performance of Thierry Alaba, which is oh, exactly. We can talk what... about Morgan S. Gray's pointless drop goal, just showing off his range of skills. On well, they, they tried one the earlier and then just thought, fuck it, we'll keep going. Um, yeah. We can. I don't know what. Yeah. Was it that bad a performance, or was it? I mean, I've only seen the one There's particularly two. contentious one in any detail, the one where it wasn't a try because there was one where it wasn't a try at one end, yeah, and it came back as a try, as a try, yeah, and then there was one where it should have been, I think, a try for Catalan for Castleford. Oh, Castleford's no try. Which way did it work? Either way, there was basically Catalan should have had more points and Castleford should have had less. Right. So Catalan should have had a try down right. at their yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that was the Pat Rich's one that got chalked off, and Castleford um, were given a try um, when oh, John Monaghan, John Monaghan, John Monaghan basically Bo- bounced it off his head. Back the ball back yeah. into his centre. Yeah, the ball came forward off his centre, and John Monaghan picked the ball up, ergo he's offside. Yeah. But it was given as a try. Right. To the point where Ben Fairley's going, Thierry, are you absolutely sure? Thierry. Well, that's why Ben Faylor was dropped, isn't it? And probably that's why they were because of the vocal he, nature but the thing of the is, question, Well, the thing is, on a normal look, he was getting questioned by the players. The players were saying to him, look, you've just had this one turned so out. Like, what are you going to do gonna about this one? Dropped, he's going to get mate. you dropped, mate. And he was right, though. Now, people can criticise Ben Thaler for sort of, well, he shouldn't have drawn attention to it, but he was trying to get the right decision made. My actual in- issue with Ben Thaler in the whole process was when he sent it up, mm. he sent it up with a version of events that was actually incorrect. Yes. 
the, his reason for the no try mm. was that Warrington had knocked it on into a Catalan player and yeah. then regathered. Yeah. That wasn't correct. Yet yeah. He went into this whole description of what had happened yeah. rather than saying, I don't think it's a try, I yeah. think they've knocked on in the contact, contest. Yeah. Have a look. Yeah. He said, it's not a try because of this, but have a look anyway. Yeah. So he told him. But he's still asking him. Is there a reason? wrong with what he told him. He was wrong. But he, he should said, have reined it in yeah. on his description. You're right. I think this, have that's it. No try. That, that, would have got him in, that would have got him in less hot water. Yeah. But he was still right to send it up as no try. And there should have. There was no reason to award it. So that was whether. Anyway. The other thing that pissed me off with this was that actually, <laughs> and it really fucking annoyed me this, was all the fucking Sky lads sitting at home at whatever studio they're in, in fucking witness or whatever, watching this on TV, like they're having a beer and just fucking slagging off Catalan, like, because oh, it, doesn't, it doesn't suit their narrative, because they want Cast to be this big performance. I'm Cass completely played shit, fed up. Catalan played quite I'm well. I'm completely and fed up with them, them guys. At it's, all. It's every game, Tom. It's every yeah. game that's played in Catalan. Yeah. Terry knew, Terry O'Connor's the worst culprit for it, I think. Yeah. But his, but the other guys back him up on it. Bill Arthur sets them all up, so he's just as bad. To be fair, yeah. But, but it was Brian, but what Car- they do, Brian Carney was doing it as well. They were all just fucking. What they seem to do Carlin. is seem to draw attention. They talk about any positives they can from the from the English team, yeah. any mitigating factors they can find to explain yeah. the English team's loss, yeah. and they give no credit to the French team or the French players. If you listened to this game and removed the tries from commentary, and then said to someone, "Who do you think won the game?" I'll tell you, 99 people out of 100 would say Castleford won that game because of the way they were talking about Oh yeah, Castleford, haven't, Castleford have played really well. They're so unlucky. I don't understand how, how, how Catalan can be winning this game. Their world-class players should be standing up and doing a lot more for them. But they but scored, what, four more tries, three more tries? But it should have been, it should have been 47 points to 16. Why? With, yeah. the, with the fuck-ups and let's let them have the kicks. It should have been 46 points. You know, they should have been beaten them by 30 points. Right. You don't beat a team by 30 points by playing shit. No, but it's consistently the narrative they put out, like you say. Oh, yeah. It was the same in the Witness game. It was the same. Witness were unlucky, Witness were unlucky. No, they, they got beaten because they couldn't execute. But Catalan are a good side and they don't credit it. They don't say, oh, well, they're not trying very That was the thing that they got me. Oh, they don't look, they don't look like they're trying very hard. But then they the flip side is, as soon as cats. Catalan win a game in this country, they rave about them. Yeah, because they spent all last year yeah. going, oh, they can't travel. Anyway, Todd Carney, give, yeah, exactly. Todd Carney grabbed two tries and two try assists. Mm-hmm. Morgan Escaray with two tries, 164 metres and two clean breaks in his return to the side. Glenn Stewart, 10 marker tackles. Didn't quite hit 40 overall, though. 100 metres, though, so he, you know, did something the other way. Mm. Good lad. Thomas Boss with two tries assists as well, played in this one instead of Myler. Yeah. That's what makes me think the car, it was We're a rotation. Rotating thing. people. Yeah. Fair enough. Greg Minikin, he's having a nice little run. Turned out well. Two tries, 197. Meters and two clean breaks. No, I'm thinking of McMeekin. McMeekin's not a big unit. unit. McMeekin's a big McMeekin's unit. McMeekin's being out. McMeekin is going to Australia. I'm telling you now. Good player. Anyway. You've heard it here. I don't know first or not. Someone's taking him to Australia because he, McMeekin, to me, he's an Aussie, he's an Aussie second. Has runner, all the all the attributes mm. to play over there. The, the, his improvement at Cass, yeah, from from being a player with some potential but not really much of an idea. It felt how to actually play the game when, when he was, was at London. London yeah. He now can defend, he can read the play, he is can it, set things up as well as ex- execute things. He runs fantastic lines. Did he get that one on, was it McMeekin that got the one handed off low owed away this weekend? Or yeah, was, yeah. Yeah, that was insane. Yeah. Soft hands from a big lad. Um, he wasn't made, he didn't make this 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 round up though. Joel Monaghan, two tries, two clean breaks. Ben Crooks of 132 metres, six successful offloads. And Jai Hitchcock, who I think was the fullback on this one, wasn't he? 115 metres. They seem to be yeah, playing. Yeah, I think they might start with musical maybe, chairs with. Solomon got hurt. That Solomon uh, got right, hurt in this one, okay. so he had to move Hitchcock's two fullback. There you go. Then. Ben Crooks is another one who's come back from the NRL and looks, you know, he looks like he's learnt from being down there. At least he understands something. defensive positioning a lot more than, his, than yeah. he did before he went. Yeah, which is what he's you would still expect. People who he's still prone to a few handling yeah. errors, mm. but um, I think he's is a more solid yeah. unit than what what disappeared. Yeah, no, I I, I rate him now. He's yeah. back, definitely, definitely. Okay, well, he made the dream team before he went, but then he had that that year where he oh, didn't course, do now, yeah. did he? Yeah, that's true. Um, okay, Tyler Casvan, glad to get that one out of the way. Hate the Catalan away game. Always scrappy against the big tubs of lard. McMeekin was immense, and Walker uh, better ref than normal. We. Um, 
We were loose but did enough. No more. Morgan played well. Nunez dominated and Gretzi Bosk back at half and kicking well. Alibert should be thrown in. Hashtag dodgy sausage mix. <laughs> uh, Andy Barker just said Thierry Alibert, Thierry Alibert, Thierry Alibert. Um, Brian Davies, good to see Catalan get the win at home and add to their away wins this season. A strong French team will be good for the comp. How the hell is Willie Mason getting a gig though? Great to see Escare back. Yeah, Mason he actually played more this weekend, but he's. Yeah. He seemed pretty. He seemed to have a, a good start to the game this weekend, but he does blow fast and doesn't really well, he's, have a positive he's, he's impact. He's a very it. old man, Mark. Uh, Let's be fair. Um, so was he was. Look, so was Andy Lynch. <laughs> yeah, fucking hell, you've got me on that one. Yeah. Okay, fat. I'll give you that. Well done. Yeah, um, fat boy Rob, not bad at all sorry not all bad for the Tigers uh, with Minikin and Holmes getting some experience and the dog fucker finally getting on the score sheet hopefully Fale will get a ban for trying to be the on the field and the video ref at the same time he did yes he did well he got dropped didn't he mm. yeah, ban uh, ok so over at the DW it was a worker day 30 points to 16 victory for Wigan over Hull KR I know absolutely nothing about this Mark safe to say that I would have thought you'd have won by more well we got no reviews in on the Google form I saw, I saw a few message, tweets and stuff coming through um, yeah. when I was in the airport but not not a lot yeah um, I was relying on I was most relying on Emma to text me updates on this <laughs> you left her at home watching the rugby well, no, I was in Barcelona Airport. Right, so you... Oh, right, because... Oh, of course, yeah, you were, yeah. Still, you were lagging, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, of course, because you'd have gone to this one, though, not you? I would have gone to it, yeah. So, yeah, basically, Hull KR with a very patched up side with four young players. I think at least three of them playing their first ever Super League game. Right. One of them maybe had been on the bench before. I don't know if he'd played before. Okay. Um, and other young players aside mm-hmm. to that in the side. Wigan also gave um, at least one debut and had a few other young players inside but not to the extent that Hull KR did and Wigan's youngsters let's face it are more prepared for Super League than Hull's are yeah, they're, they're in a more professional yeah. setup. Um but Hull KR were winning with what 16 minutes to go or so 15 20 minutes to go right. um, Wigan were awful by all accounts and couldn't keep hold of couldn't complete sets couldn't Put moves on, just couldn't, didn't play well together. This is what I've heard from everyone mm. that went. Um, Josh Charlie, though, scored three tries. Two of them were, one of them was very similar to Tom Johnson's one on the Friday. Okay. And the other one was a picked up a loose ball and just showed some speed and then uh, reined it in. Oh, 269 right. metres, three clean breaks. He also took over the kicking in this game, missed a few, scored a few, but we'll see how that's going to develop. Okay. Oliver Gilda with a try, six tackles, 120 metres. He actually got man of the match, uh, by, I think, in this one. Oh. Rather than Charlie. Is that because that's what the, one of the, is it the sponsors, man of the match? I'm pretty sure that's one of the, one of the messages we got through said. Right. Um, Anthony Gellin with a try, six, 150 metres, five successful offloads, although he did go off with. Uh, think a calf injury towards the end of this game when Wigan juggled the side around weirdly Sargentson started on the bench mm. came on when Bateman went off with his first concussion yeah. stayed on when Turney went off because we think I think they think we needed to score some points yeah. then Gelling went off so Turney came back on the full back Sorry, sorry, went to the, out to the, to the right centre um, John Bateman 5 tackle bus 164 metres remarkable g- considering he didn't finish the game because of his second concussion which is what ruled him out of the Warrington game yeah. um, <laughs> oh, so he managed I, I tell he managed Bateman. to make 164 metres yeah whilst being off the pitch twice yeah because he's an amazing concussions. he's an insane player he's brilliant love him uh, Maurice Blair for Hooker had two try assists both uh, decent flat passes at the line 105 metres Adam Walker um, 151 metres three successful offloads Kieran Dixon 124 metres George Lawler 47 tackles 10 of which were marker tackles and as you've already alluded to we did get some tweets on it so thank you very much but Mark you were in the airport and honestly we didn't get any Google fan reviews so no. you've, you've covered that very well right that's round 8 of Super League out of the way let's take a look back at this weekend now as we bring you our feedback and reviews from round 9 of Super League
So, into round nine of Super League. I think this is definitely the first time in Super League pod history that we've covered three rounds in one show as well. So, it is a bit of a, a bit of a first for us. But back to Friday night, and over at Headingley, in front of ever dwindling crowds, Leeds Rhinos lost by 10 points to Hull KR's 30. And actually, Hull KR got themselves out to about a 20 points to nothing lead at one point in this. And, and Leeds, hashtag Leeds slump continues, Mark. Yeah, remarkable stuff, isn't it? Um, I think we need to seriously, seriously address what's going wrong yeah. properly. Well, I've um, already sent Rich Wilkinson a picture of the shirt for him to wear when, uh, when he comes over, when they don't win any Oh, Rich like will be one of the guys who hasn't had his comments in for the other two games, isn't he? Because he always sends them in on Facebook like the uh, next day or right. something. And obviously I haven't backtracked through Facebook to add them on. Uh, this week's one will be on, if yeah. I found it. I'll I did paraphrase. Back-